Now we're going to talk about irrational square roots. We already talked about rational square roots. And remember this, uh, 4 squared, for example, is 16. So the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. And this is a, a rational number. And when the number that you're square rooting is a perfect square like that, then you end up with a rational number. But if you're square rooting something that's not a perfect square, for example, if you try to do the square root of 17, you wouldn't get this nice round number like this. Uh, it's going to be 4 point something, but it's going to be an irrational number. So let's take a second and talk about what an irrational number is. Irrational numbers are numbers that can't be written as a ratio of two integers. Rem remember, a rational number can be written as a ratio, and that's the, the root of the word rational there. A rational number can be written as a ratio of two integers. An irrational number can't be written as a ratio. A good example of an irrational number is the number pi. You've probably seen this before. The, for example, the area of a circle, the, the area covered there is equal to pi times the radius squared. And pi, you probably know, is 3.14. But it's only 3.14 approximately. It's really 3.14159265535. And these digits go on and on and on forever. And they never terminate. And they never repeat. They go on endlessly. This is an, an example of a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. A non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. It's an irrational number. And it, it shows up whenever we deal with circles. Some people have used fractions, like Archimedes, for example, realized that the number 22 over 7 is close to pi, but it's only an approximation. You can't make a ratio like that that is exactly pi. And you might think, well, don't we have methods for converting decimals into fractions? Couldn't we convert this into a fraction? And we do. We have things like this. Remember, we said, uh, suppose you had the number uh, 0.123 repeating like that. So it's 0.123123123. Couldn't we convert that decimal to uh, to a fraction? And we sure can. You remember the method. We say x equals 0.123 repeating. And then there are three digits repeating here. So we multiply by 1,000. And we get 1,000x is 123.123 repeating. And we do 1,000x minus x is equal to this minus this. And we've worked a lot of problems like this before. 123.123 repeating minus 0.123 repeating. And these pieces here get lopped off. And so we're left with 99x is equal to this. And we can just do the algebra and figure out the, the number for x. A rational number, well, let's go ahead and do it. In this case, it's 99 sorry, that would be 999x, 1000x minus x is equal to 123. So x ends up being 123 over 999. And we could simplify that, but the point is we've taken this decimal and written it as a ratio, a rational number. So you think, couldn't we do that with the number pi? Well, no. The reason we can do it with the number 0.123 repeating is because we see three digits repeating, so we multiply by 10 to the third, and this little algebraic maneuver works out. These digits never repeat. They go on and on and on. So we can't have any number here to multiply by to use this technique. There are an infinite number of digits after the decimal point here and the number pi. So pi is an irrational number. It cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. It's possible to think up other numbers that are irrational. You just have to come up with a, a pattern of digits that never terminates and never repeats. Here's an example. I could say the number a is equal to 0 0.121121121112111112. And you see a distinct pattern here. And you could use that pattern to continue writing digits forever. And they could never end and never repeat. So that would be a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Or you could do something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and so on. And you can see there's a distinct pattern in the digits here. 
And again, you could use that pattern to predict the next digit and write as many digits as you wanted. And they would go on forever. They would never end and they would never repeat. So these are irrational numbers. Now, irrational numbers are real numbers. They exist on the real number line. If we think of zero here, and there's four. The number pi, for example, is right about there, just a little larger than three. Uh, all, all of these numbers, these numbers I've written here, A and B, they exist at some point on the real number line as well. They are real numbers, they're just not rational numbers. They can't be written as a ratio of two integers. And it turns out the real number line is made of all of the rational numbers and all of the irrational numbers together. Those two sets of numbers combined make up the real number line. And now that we've talked about irrational numbers, let's come back to this topic, irrational square roots. Um, in addition to pi, other numbers are irrational numbers that are well-known numbers. For example, the square root of 2 is approximately equal to 1.414. You can write that in your notes. But you should know that this is just an approximation. It's approximately equal to that. These digits really go on and on forever, and 1.414 is a convenient approximation. If you are working with the algebra, it's more common to keep it in that form because that's the, the exact number. Um, if, you're, if you're trying to get a decimal calculation in your answer, you would use that. And your, your calculator can give you more digits than that. But um, the square root of 3 is another one. It's a, I'll say it's approximately equal to 1.732. And the square root of 5, another example, is approximately 2.236. The square root of 7 is approximately 2.646. And as long as you have a number under your radical that is not a perfect square, then the square root of it will be an irrational number. Now, sometimes you have numbers, and you're, you're trying to take the square root of a number, and the number has some factors that would give you irrational square roots. And here's an example, the square root of 20. And if, suppose that we're told to simplify this, the square root of 20. Well, we, if we do this, we get an irrational number, but there's a proper way to simplify this. We know that 20 is equal to 4 times 5. So I can say the square root of 20 is the square root of 4 times 5. Now, I'm going to take this square root of 4 times 5 and, um, and break it up into two square roots. That'll be the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And the square root of 4, that's simply 2. So this is 2 times the square root of 5. And that's how I would typically write my answer. 2 square root of 20 is equal to 2. And it's often written without the little multiplication symbol there. And it's often read out loud as 2 root 5. And this is considered simplified. The square root of 20 written like that is not considered simplified, even though they're mathematically equivalent. If there are perfect square factors, in there, like the 4 right there. You take those perfect square factors out. A lot of times you can take one of these steps and do it in your head. You can just see, okay, I've got a 4 and a 5, and I tend to think of this as the perfect square factor popping out from under the radical. And when it comes out from under the radical, it gets square rooted. So in other words, instead of having the square root of 4 under the radical, we have a 2 out here outside of the radical. And that technique of taking the number, factoring it, and trying to find factors that are perfect squares, and then popping those outside of the radical and square rooting them, that technique is pretty common and becomes pretty easy with practice. And in the next video, we'll go over several examples of doing exactly that.